Hi, this is Anthony, Managing Member of Exceptional Accounting, and today we're going to talk about the revenue processes in QuickBooks, specifically the invoice and sales receipt functions. Um, very quickly, I'd like to go over when you should use an invoice and a sales receipt, just for those who don't know. Invoices should only be used when customers are not paying immediately with the transaction. So you'll create an invoice, you'll send it to the client, and sometime later, at a later point, uh, you'll receive payment, and you have the need to track and see who owes you money when, etc. Um, if you have a relationship with a client where they pay for the goods first, and then you give them the product, for example, that would be a sales receipt type transaction, where there is no need to track the outstanding um, amount of money that they owe you because they don't owe you any money they've already paid so that's just something clear I've come across clients who sometimes always use the create invoice function and then receive payment when they are dealing with customers even if they've already paid another issue that could come up is let's say you are reconciling your bank account and you see a payment from a customer sometimes my sometimes clients will go and create an invoice and then receive the payment and then make the deposit for that item that already occurred um, in that case that's not really necessary because it's an after the fact transaction you've already been paid for that so the more appropriate entry would be a sales receipt if you um, we're going to do that or perhaps just a direct data entry into the register recording that transaction um, so now that we've gone over the basics, just to summarize again, invoices are for times when customers will pay you later, and sales receipts are for when customers are paying you immediately or have already paid you for a service. So here we are right now at the homepage of QuickBooks, and this opening page really lays out the flow of an invoice. Okay. So with an invoice, you first create it, which means you know you create the invoice, send it to your client. Um, that will then in turn post an entry on QuickBooks stating that you know this customer owes you money. When you get a check in the mail, you want to show that the customer has paid you, because they have, because you have a check in your hand. And later on, you'll have to record the deposit when you actually take that check to the bank. So we're going to go through this together, a invoice and and do all of the uh, do the whole process together. So I'm going to pick Crenshaw Bob, and this pops up. It says uh, this customer or job you selected has outstanding billable time and or costs. Okay, if you press OK, this will show up any expenses that have been allocated to this customer that need to be reimbursed okay so um, if you've been following other tutorials I've showed you in a couple ways when you can when you enter transactions or specifically expenses into QuickBooks under the name column if you select a customer instead of a vendor the little billable box comes open and you can check that. If you check it, that tells QuickBooks that this expense needs to be um, charged to the client. And when you create an invoice, this is where it pops up. And so this was originally entered as an expense. It was allocated to Crenshaw Bob. And we can now check it. We can add in a markup if we'd like, as long as we associate a markup income. You can also do mileage or other items, but right now we're just doing expenses. Press OK, and there's our item right there. In addition, we're going to add some other things. So let's say we, you know, a tree removal. Let's say we remove four trees. There's a standard price of, I don't know, $50 amount. Uh, taxable, you can choose if it's going to be subject to sales tax. That's a whole different tutorial we're going to get into at some other point. Um, but for right now, we're just going to say none. Um, notice here in the corner, you can choose different types of templates. So I'm choosing a product invoice, but let's suppose we were just doing uh, services. 
you could do a service and no, notice how that really makes that a lot cleaner. Um, but you know you can pick whatever one that is um, uh, that's appropriate for your business and you can also create custom invoices as well. So we're just doing a service invoice because it's simple and makes it easy. If you want to assign a class you can and purchase order number we don't really need that um, if there was a purchase order that you're fulfilling you could put that in there terms um, if you want to offer terms to your client then you know what the terms are when they need to pay or if you're gonna give them a discount or if it's due immediately you can put the terms there you can also put a customer message you can make your own and uh, let's say we were going to want to email this invoice. Okay, now I'm clicking this right here, but if you're just doing a single invoice, you can just go up to here to send, and then email invoice right there, and that will send the individual invoice. But let's say I'm a, I'm working all morning and I have about 50 invoices that I need to send, and so instead of doing this 50 times, I can just click this, and then later on we can actually email it. So this is the basic invoice we've created it we know how much is paid so I can do save and close okay um, so let's make a company in Miller so we can do Jake at mmc.com and customers email list we're just gonna say that his is mark at ggm.com Yes, we're gonna save that and we're good. Uh, no, I don't want to complete the family room. Okay, so we just did that one. We just created the invoice. So let's say we just got done creating 50, 50 invoices. If we come up here to file, print forms, or excuse me, send forms, our invoice is right there. And had we really done 50 invoices and checked that email box, all of those invoices would be right here. All you would have to do then is just click send now and it QuickBooks would send all of those invoices for you in one button. So let's say we've sent our invoices and later on, a couple weeks down, we get a check in the mail from Mr. Crenshaw. Well the next step once you've created the invoices is if you want to receive the payment. No, I don't want to require okay. So we're gonna put in the payment. We're gonna put in the, the customer. Crenshaw. And let's say that he's paid a couple invoices. This one, uh, yes. That one, that one, um, and that one. Let's say he's paid all of his outstanding invoices. Okay. Payment method, let's say he just wrote us a check. We're going to put the check number and the memo. We can put in as well if there's something that we need to put in. Um, or not. You could put in the number of the invoices that were paid or whatever you'd like. Uh, so we've done that and now that we've done that we can press save and close and that will show that this person, this customer has paid. And notice that if you can pick other cards as well like American Express etc or, or whatever um, Sometimes, for example, if you're in the services industry, you need to invoice, and then instead of waiting for a check, you have an agreement with your customer that after a certain amount of time, you will actually charge their account, maybe um, debit their bank account or charge their credit card. In that case, you would pick the appropriate method, and if you have that uh, merchant service set up with Intuit, then you can just click Process Discover Payment When Saving, and then you can process the card. But for simplicity, we're just going to do the check. So, and even if you, let's say you have an external, um, an external third party merchant service, you would still pick Discover or Visa or, or whatnot, whatever card you use, you would just leave this unchecked. Um, and actually, this wouldn't even show up if you don't have the service uh, set up. So, you could just pick the payment method just to show that, oh yeah, they paid with a Visa card, but it just wasn't with Intuit service. So there's a check right there. We've got that. Uh, there's no discounts and credits. If we want to unapply the payment, we can just click that, and that will uncheck everything. But we're going to check everything. 
and we're going to do you would click save and close now before we do that I want to show you over here if you go to the reports customer receivable and AR aging summary this is the report that shows all of your customers and how much money they owe you based on the invoices that you the outstanding invoices that you have created so if we look here Crenshaw Bob he's got two thousand dollars and if we drill down we can see all of the invoices outstanding so this is just a good snapshot if you want to see exactly how many receivables you have and who owes you money what the time parameter is if someone's late or overdue all of that is here so again just real quick that was reports customers receivable AR aging summary so we're about to do that um, we've applied our payments got the check we're gonna do save and close okay so that's step number two step number three is we need to record the deposit okay um, the reason why we're doing that is because you know you may receive a bunch of checks in the mail but you haven't taken them to the bank yet and you don't want to pull up a report of who owes you money and see that a customer owes you money if they don't really because they have the check you have the check on your desk you just haven't taken it to the bank yet so that's a uh, it's important so this deposit function is basically saying okay I've got a bunch of checks from my customers I'm gonna go take them to the bank so I'm filling out my deposit slip at home before I take it I'm depositing this check this check and this check total amount of the deposit in the bank is two thousand three hundred thirteen dollars and fifty three cents okay it fills it in for you if you want to get back to that screen you can hit the payments button right there press OK if you want to sign a class or add any additional check numbers um, you know you can put those in there and that's basically it you press save and close you know make sure you pick you, you check the correct account maybe many businesses have more than one account so make sure the deposit is to the correct account you pick the correct date you press save and close and you're done and when you go to banking reconcile and you're reconciling your account there is that deposit that we just did so when you reconcile your bank account later it'll show up there uh, very briefly um, the same thing is with a sales receipt it's similar um, in the way of a of a invoice except that it bypasses the receive payment function because you've already received payment and so when we create something here so let's let's just create one real quick you pick the date amount fifty dollars let's say they paid us with a check you know check number this fifty dollars and you when you press save and close when we go to record deposits there's our receipt right there so it's very similar to invoices except you don't have to do the receive payment function because you use a sales receipt when you've already received payment you're just giving them a receipt much like you would get at a, a store when you buy something so and then if we go over here to banking reconcile and take a look again there is the deposit for the sales receipt so that's just a quick introduction to the revenue function we're gonna get into an advanced tutorial which will go into more details and problems that you can encounter um, please check out our YouTube channel to get more uh, information and check out exceptionalaccounting.com and send me your questions uh, in a comment below I'd love to answer your questions and make a video for you uh, about any questions you have thanks and have a great day